ladies and gentlemen, one request I always keep getting is to do a retrospective on the Sonic franchise. After the enormously popular internet sensation, why the modern Sonic stories just don't work, and to that end, I say, yeah, let's do it. But first, I'd love to come another dedicated prerequisite video on the meta era. This time, we're doing a retrospective on the Sonic series and how it evolved throughout the 2010s to bring us to where we are now. To sort through the shit heap, I could think of no better guest than Jeb of Jeb Tube. Introduce yourself, good fellow. Oh, hi, Jay. Or as some people refer to you, Jays. Do I dare return to Sonic after I said farewell with a question mark? Yeah, sure, I guess it's what the people want to hear. So, uh, in what new way will we be looking at the meta era of Sonic the Hedgehog today? Well, to go over the history of the meta era, we must first discuss where the Sonic series was by the time of 2010. Ever since Shadow the Hedgehog debuted in 2005, the series was in what has been dubbed as the Dark Age of Sonic. Before you comment anything, this doesn't mean that we think all those games are bad, the meta era games are better, but I already made a video on this, go watch that. Point is, the series was a laughing stock thanks to the likes of Sonic 06 or Shadow the Hedgehog, where it was just totally acceptable to make trashy, rushed reviews of Sonic Unleashed and Black Knight because, hey, it's Sonic, who really cares? Yeah, and like, it was here where things such as green eye debates, original fan character do not steal memes, and subsequent riffing of the Sonic fanbase as a whole truly came to a boiling point. If you were old enough to not be oblivious towards it, you couldn't really deny that there was just a negative air around Sonic for a long time, regardless of your personal feelings. That kind of stuff still carries over to this day, where the Sonic fanbase is generally regarded as a horrible mass, sort of as a blanket statement, either because of mistakes within the series they follow, or because of outbursts and incidents that, at this point, have happened many years ago. It's debatable as to whether or not it's truly worse than other fandoms of its size, but I digress. Which brings us into 2010. Three new Sonic games were releasing. The third installment of the Sonic Riders series, which was really fun in its first two outings, a return to 2D form on console and a sequel to Sonic Unleashed without the Werehog where Sonic and Tails travel to space. That sounds pretty amazing. Well, the Dark Age came to a conclusion with Sonic Free Riders, a game that barely needs commentary. I mean, it single-handedly killed the Riders series for a whole decade. A game with shoddy production values, abysmal controls and gameplay, and was basically doomed from the start. It was an early game for the Xbox Kinect. What better way for the Dark Age to go out than with a game that people can barely play? Like, literally, people weren't gonna buy a Kinect for that shite, so very few played it, even if it was any good. But there is one thing about Sonic Free Riders that would be an indicator for things to come. The voice cast and writing direction. 